Hey Lego fans, welcome back to Magboy Creations for a Star Wars set review. We're looking at the Jedi Scout Fighter from the Yoda Chronicles. This is set number 75051, 490 pieces of pure enjoyment. It has really, really long front tips that extend beyond the cockpit area. I like the Starship. It's a unique design, and we will get into all of the bits and pieces and take a look at everything more closely in just a moment. But first, the minifigures. Ah, yes, the Jack 14 minifigure. I've waited for this set to come out just so I can get this character. If you guys don't have any background, I'll give you just a bit of history here. Jack 14 is a Force-sensitive Sith clone that was created by Count Dooku. Yes, Count Dooku. He was originally intended to be part of a much larger Sith clone army. Eventually, Jack joined forces with the Jedi because of his betrayal from the Sith. Now, Jack 14 was incredibly powerful. His dangerously enhanced Force powers were given to him when Count Dooku channeled Force energy from an extremely powerful Kaber lightsaber crystal into his cloning chamber. One of his arms is transparent blue, and that represents his reservoir of power. And that is the arm that the force energy comes from. He also wields a blue lightsaber with a white hilt, and it's unique because it's the only Jedi that has a white hilt lightsaber. Now looking at the minifigure specifically, I love the design on his torso, the helmet printing, the printing on the pants, and there's even, let me get a close-up for you so you can see it here, there's even printing on his arm. That is fantastic. I love it. He's got printing on the back of his torso. This is a superb minifigure, and this minifigure alone is worth getting the set for. Now if we remove his helmet, you can see he has force energy even in his face. That's pretty cool. Flesh-colored skin, and then if we rotate him around, he does have an alternate face in the back with the blue eyes. Here we have our Athorian Jedi Master. Now Athorians were mammalian herbivorous sentient species. They were commonly called hammerheads because of their long curving neck and T-shaped head. Now you could tell the male from the female Athorians by looking at the humps on the back of their head. The females had two humps while the males only had one hump and that's indicated right here. And as we continue to look at this minifigure you could see that there is printing on the back of the torso, standard silver Jedi lightsaber hilt with a green lightsaber, and the printing on the torso and the pants. I would have never thought, being a kid, watching the original three movies, episodes four, five, and six, and seeing Hammerhead in the cantina, that he was a Jedi. It, it, it never would have occurred to me. But I guess stories take interesting twists all the time, and that is a pretty cool story. Here we see our RA-7 protocol droid. Now this is a low intelligence model. It was specifically designed for the Galactic Empire. It has a secret surveillance system installed in its head. It would record everything, and then would make periodic dumps of data via encrypted frequencies on standard public comm units to the Imperial Security Bureau. And looking at this minifigure, you can see that there's just a standard robot head. There is no face underneath a helmet of any kind. It's just a head. And you have printing on the torso and on the legs. There is no printing on the sleeves, but circling around, we do have printing on the back of the torso. There are no accessories for this minifigure. Pretty straightforward robot. Looking at the last minifigure included in this Star Wars set is our astromech droid. Now the droid 
serves as an automated mechanic performing a variety of repair duties and often is a substitute for a nav computer on small ships. The droid provided in-flight maintenance and repair, provided a number of routine functions so the pilot could focus on flying the ship. And looking at our astromech droid, it is blue and silver and gray, typical droid of this kind. It has printing on the body and on the head, no printing on the legs, and the printing carries around to the back of the head, but nothing on this body. Pretty standard build for these types of droids. There's only four pieces, two arms, a head, and a body, and you can tilt them forward like this to make them look like they are sliding along and moving forward. There is a port on the Jedi Scout fighter to put the astromech droid in case repairs are needed while in flight or stationary on the ground. Before we get into the Scout Fighter review, let's take a look at the cargo. Here is our small piece of cargo, which does go into the back of the Jedi Scout Fighter. It contains thermal detonators and also transports holocrons. Now, a holocron is an organic crystal lattice device which stores phenomenal quantities of data. They're used to hold information on force techniques and instruction manuals by Force users, starting with the Sith and then later the Jedi. That is why Jack 14 has to keep the holocrons safe. Now it's time to look at our Jedi Scout Fighter. This is a phenomenal ship, and it's, it's quite big to get into the picture, so I'm going to zoom in with the camera and focus on some more details. But first, I'm going to kind of give you a 360 view. And I'm just going to spin this around so we can take a look at all of the different angles. Fantastic Starfighter. I like the design. I haven't seen anything like this in a Star Wars set. To date, there's been pieces of this ship, different components, you could say, used in other sets. But to put it all together and combine it into one build, phenomenal. Here we have the cockpit of the plane, which can also act as an escape pod should we need to do that. It simply just slides out. And let's take a closer look at the escape pod. It's just a standard little detachable ship. Both the pilot and co-pilot can depart a burning or on the verge of being destroyed plane. These cockpit shields open straight up and I will put Jack and our Athorian warrior inside. Now you really can't fit them too well with their lightsabers so we have to remove them for the moment. But they do fit very nice inside. And just tilt this up a little bit. You can see we have control modules for both the pilot and the co-pilot. And that's just about all the detail inside this. So let's close the canopies and we will reattach this to the ship. Now, as you can see, there's just this single blue stud that sticks out and a triangle piece on the bottom, which acts as a bumper to keep it from going anywhere other than onto the blue peg. And then we have a Technic brick that just connects to it. We also have, if you can see down in here, there's Technic slides, and that's where these pieces will go when you attach the ship. And it kind of guides itself real nice. Here's the back of the ship. I like the way they did the engines. Of course, these are the round 2x2 two two blue studs. And as you can see, they do rotate both the external piece and the internal piece, which is pretty neat. These flaps I'll zoom out a little bit for you. These flaps on the side do go up and down, and both the top and the bottom go up and down. So these 
do move as well. Now this cannon does lift up like such, and it does a full 360 turn, so your co-pilot can control the cannons. And of course we have our standard spring-loaded missiles right here at the top, and I will just hit one. Boo! There it goes. <laughs> Be careful, kids, if you play with this, with the spring-loaded missiles, because they do come out. You never want to point this at somebody's general direction. So just be careful with that. Now, back here with the cannon, this whole apparatus also lifts up to reveal a storage compartment, which is where our cargo will go. And we will put our holocrons inside the cargo containers. We'll put the covers back on. And since the lightsabers don't go very well with the characters in the cockpit, you have these two little clips on the side of the cargo. And that is a perfect place to store the lightsabers when you are in flight. And this simply sets right in here like that and closes no problem. Here's a top-down view of our aircraft. I like the use of the flush, flat studs and the grill paneling to create some symmetry, different effects. I really like the detail. A few stickers in this set. Right here you can see some on the sides. Those are stickers. Obviously these here are stickers. We have two primary cannons up front and you could really respect the distance that these wings stick out from the front of the cockpit. This is an absolute enormous starfighter. And of course right in the middle this is where our astromech droid will go. He just fits in there nicely. Looking at the bottom of the ship standard base plates no landing gear or anything of the nature. It's just flat. That completes our review of the Yoda Chronicles Jedi Scout Fighter and the four minifigures which are included. Leave a like, some comments, please share our videos, and subscribe so we can bring you more reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye now.